from the day of resurrection, the power of the resurrection of Christ, as we come to enjoy and experience that power of the resurrection, what is the purpose of that power over the unseen enemies? The purpose, the purpose, and let's look at it in Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21. I'm reading to you from verse 1. The purpose of your release, the purpose of your freedom, the purpose why you are loosed and delivered, the purpose of your healing, the purpose of the joy of the Lord in your heart, in your life. What is the purpose? Matthew chapter 21. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem, and were come to Bethphage, unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus to disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find an ass tied, and a coach with her. Loose them, and bring them unto me. Loose them, release them, set them free. What's the purpose? Bring them to me. Did you see why you are loosed? And you see why you are set free? And you see why the power of resurrection, the power of the resurrection of Christ is setting you free? Loose them, bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, he shall say, The Lord has need of them, and straightway he will send them. All this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, and he calls the form, the form of an ass. And then it says, And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the coach, and put, the, and put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. All this caught down branches from the trees and strawed them in the way. And, it, and the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And when he was come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. What's the purpose that us was loosed? To carry Jesus to the city. What's the purpose? You're free. To carry Jesus to the city. To carry Jesus to the world. That now you are free. Nothing binds you anymore. Nothing binds your heart anymore. Nothing binds your soul anymore. Nothing binds your spirit anymore. He conquers all your enemies for you. All your sin forces, they are sent away from you. You are free. You are free within and you are free without. Your family is free. Your children are free. Your wife, your husband, they are free. Everybody around you, they are free. You are free and you are free and free indeed. Why are you free to carry Jesus to the city? To take Jesus to the people around. In your village, they need Jesus. In your city, they need Jesus and the thing that tied you before. And you used to spend your money on sickness, on this or that. And you used to feel this pain. And you were tied down on the bed of affliction. Or you were tied down on the, on the platform of uh, debt and unemployment. But now you are free from debt. You are free from unemployment. Or before you were tied to those enemies, you saw them in the dream, you saw them in the day. And you thought about them every time. And they were threatening you. And they said, ah, oh, you think you are going to make it in life? 
You think certificate is what it is? You think because you went to university, our children did not go to university, and then because you went, and because you are carrying paper in your hand, will make the paper useless in your hand. I'm telling you, they cannot do it anymore. That paper will become more than a paper. That word is going to become a ticket for employment. And you're going to get a good employment in Jesus' name. Now you are free, but why are you free? What's the purpose of the freedom? What's the purpose of this power over unseen enemies? That now you will take Jesus' courage. Now, nothing disturbs you now. Nothing hinders you now. Nothing ties you down now. Now you are free every day of the week, every week of the month, every month of the year. Now you are free for the rest of your life. Because now you need to stand up and take Jesus. Don't stand up yet. You need to take Jesus Christ to the city. You will take him to your city. The word of God will bring salvation to multitudes in your community in Jesus' name. In First Corinthians chapter six, First Corinthians chapter six, we're reading from verse nineteen. First Corinthians chapter six, verse nineteen. Watch, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? That your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. You are no more a habitation of demons. You are no more a habitation of evil spirits. Evil spirits, they don't have any part in you anymore. The prince of this world cometh and he has nothing in you. Your head is free. I said your head is free. You don't have any mental problem, do you? I said do you? You don't have depression, do you? Your stomach is free. Your blood system is free. There is no poison in your body anymore. There is no sickness, no disease in your body anymore. You are free and free indeed. Now you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Not the temple of evil spirits. You are no more the temple of evil powers. You are no more the temple of, you know, magicians and all those people. Anybody that is saying, I eat something inside her. That fellow is talking out of sales. There's nothing hidden in you anymore. Only Christ is in you. Only the Holy Ghost is in you. And then it says, Which is in you? Which ye have of God? And ye are not your own. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. And in your spirit. Which are God's. What's the purpose of your freedom? The purpose of the power of sympathies to glorify God now in your body. You're no more glorifying Satan. You're no more glorifying evil spirits. You're no more bowing down to them. You're no more cringing and crawling before those evil powers, those enemies. You're just, you're a child of the king. And you have the freedom and the boldness and the protection of the church of the king. Now you are free. You will glorify God. We're told in Galatians chapter 1, chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, reading from verse 1. The purpose of our freedom. The purpose of the power over unseen enemies. Galatians chapter 1, 5 verse 1. Stand fast therefore. In the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. Stand fast. In that liberty, in that freedom where Christ has made us free. And, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. It says now that you are free, stand fast in that freedom. I don't talk about the bondage. Don't talk about what it used to be. Just forget it. As water that is gone under the bridge. Don't recall it. It's your memory. I am free. I am free. That's all you need to talk about. You stand in the freedom, in the liberty where Christ has made you free. It tells us in verse 6, For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith that walketh by love. Why are you free? For you to have faith that now walketh by love. You are free because now you are set free to go and work, to go and love, to go and labor, and to just manifest faith in Christ. That's why we are free. There is a purpose for that freedom. It tells us in verse 13, For brethren, 
ye have been called unto freedom unto liberty only use not your liberty for an occasion to the flesh but by love serve one another the liberty we have the freedom we have and this power that we have over our sin forces the purpose the goal is so that we'll be serving the lord you will serve the lord in mark chapter 5 Mark chapter 5, the purpose of power over unseen forces. You see this man, let me read to you from verse 1. And he came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the gatherings. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs, a man with, un with an unclean spirit what is dwelling among the tombs and no man could bind him no not what chains because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains and the chains had been plugged asunder by him and the fetters broken in pieces neither could any man tame him and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself was told it was under the power of the unseen forces, evil spirits. And in verse 6, but when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. And he cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And, he's, and he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out. They will go out. They always will go out in the name of Jesus. And entered into the swine, and they had run violently down with steep, a steep place into the sea. They were about two thousand, and were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled and told each in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil. And at the legion sitting and close and in his right mind. And they were afraid. And, and they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coats. Verse 18. And when he was come into the sheep, he had, uh, he had been, he, he, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him, pleaded with him, that he might be with him. Now I am free. Let me stay here. It's like when Peter said, let's build here three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And then how be Jesus suffered him not, but says unto him, go home to thy friends and tell them. That's the purpose. That's the reason. The purpose of power over unseen enemies. Now you are delivered. And the man just wanted to stay and be enjoying the fellowship of Christ. But Jesus said, go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord has done for thee. And has had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish it in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him. And all men did marvel. When you tell them your story, they will marvel. Because now you will show the glory of God everywhere you go. I come to point number three. The power of prayer over unseen forces. The power of prayer over unseen forces. Matthew chapter 16 verse 19. Matthew chapter 16 verse 19. 
and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. The key. You have the key in your hand. You'll open the door. You will close the door. The one that has the key is the one in authority. Jesus didn't say, I'll give the keys to Herod. There's a key in the hand of the believer that Herod the king does not have. He did not say, I'll give the key to Pilate. There is a key in the hand of the believer that the pilots of the world do not have. And Jesus did not say, I'll give the key unto the members of the Sanhedrin. There is a key. I'm sorry to say this, but I'll say, there's a key. In the hand of the believer that the bishops and the archbishops that do not know Christ, that they do not have. You, the way you are today because you know Christ, there is a key in your hand. There is an authority in your mouth. And what you command will be done by God in heaven in Jesus' name. There's a key you have that Habalists do not have. There's a key you have that the people of the world, they may go to any place in the world, they may go to the depths of the sea and go to the top of the mountain to think that they're going to get power. There's a key in your hand today that the people of the world, no matter where they're gone, into the depths, into the highs, a key you have that they do not have. I pray you'll use that key. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever, whatsoever, shout it aloud. Whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Don't cry before the unseen forces anymore. You have the power. You have the authority. And you have the liberty. Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed where? In heaven. Matthew chapter 18 verse 18. Very lesson to you. Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever ye shall lose